Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die Hello everybody, welcome to Long Bangers, I'm Mai. Good morning, I'm Colin. It's uh, the last, well, I was going to say the last Long Bangers of the season, I suppose it is, last one that we were covering a game, although we will record other episodes um, in the off-season, close season whatever you call it. Do you call it pre-season as soon as it's finished? Like, are we now in pre-season or is Aye. this close season? Aye, it's the end of, I just call it the end of the season actually, and then I didn't really think about it, and then I call it pre-season when... Oh, these shitty games start, but you can't be asked with it. But I can't be asked with it. No, you know, folk do love it, but I can't be fucked with preseason games. Aye. I've, uh, we've talked about this before, haven't we? We're getting lulled mm-hmm. into like a false sense of anticipation or excitement about yeah. a fucking yeah. friendly at Albion Rovers, and you're like, oh, fucking brilliant, brilliant. I know, and I, I, get, I get it to an extent. I mind there was one, and I didn't go, but because there always seems to be a no bad one. Like, I have a barbecue every year, as you know, because you come. Um, there's usually a game that day, and it was in Lithgow Rose, maybe, and I thought, oh, that's going to be attractive, different ground and all Aye. that, nice sunny day, that would be good. Um, but then it's still shit when you go, because it's like fucking 14 subs a team and that, again, it's... Aye. Well, I think you're always hoping to catch a glimpse, like a new signing or that, and see like, oh, what they're going to be like, and you expect them, obviously, Optimistic. to be like messy. We'll be somebody that early Aye. as well. Um, and that's then... what happens. I mean, Malkowski playing his first game over in Ireland and reading about how, oh, a great come for Crossy, oh, what a player. Aye. <laughs> yeah, aye, the worst um, player maybe ever. It has it's definitely, uh, definitely up there. I think he made the goalkeeper uh, for my worst eleven on the the four four two article that I did. I had to, you had to. Aye. I mean, and it, and it was a shame because like Simon Brown and and Andy McNeil got hard along with that. They weren't the brilliant either, but they were nowhere on his level. Aye, folk will still argue that to on Hibs and that. I've seen it. You think? Aye. No, no, no. Well, Malkovsky was in a league in his own. Horrendous, absolutely. Aye. Um, right, yesterday we went to Tyne Castle. We needed to win to finish fourth and leapfrog the buggers. Um, we didn't. We drew. Um, what did you make of the game, Carl? I think I said last week when we re- I can't remember when we recorded, but I said that if oh, it was Thursday after the the Celtic game. If we go there, put up a fight and come away with a draw, it might not be that, but that bad sort of thing. You might still be on there, like supportive and all that, but Aye. I think the context that we're having 10 men for what, six days? Just over half, probably, just over hour, probably 18 right, minutes by the injury been, thing. Yeah, correct. Uh, um, I was uh, come away a bit disappointed, actually, disappointed with how, how the game went um, after that. I thought, poor start. I thought, I said to myself, I said watching my wife and my daughter, and I was like, there was moaning, and my daughter gets on my case because she's trying to be positive and that, right? And I, I'm, and I used to be like that, I think, but I've kind of losing it with this, this, this mob. And I'm going, keep the, oh, the whole chat going into that game would have been, didn't you keep it, keep it tight, then I let them score. Their fans will start getting nervous, and bo- you want them getting booed off at half time, right? Eight minutes, didn't bother going and shutting the boy down. Free shot. Aye. Just fucking fuck's sake. And then we get back into it. Lovely free kick. The, uh, red card, I think it's the, I think the VAR got it right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, I was conflicted. I want, would I rather have a penalty and a yellow card or would I rather have a red card and the, um, and the free kick? But then we scored for the free kick, so you get both. But like, I was, I wasn't Aye. sure which one I would have actually preferred before we scored. Aye, um, because this conversation. Because I, I actually thought they're shit. Like we're eleven and we're ten, it just gives them an opportunity to just say that we're just going to camp in. So I think, I think the penalty. Assuming we would have scored the penalty, it might have been better to be eleven v eleven. I think we might have had a better chance. But it Aye. sounds mad. It, it, it's funny just be, just before we, were, uh, we started recording, so we were putting my contact lenses, and then I was just thinking about that exact point. And I was like, ah, I, I, could, I definitely would have rather we, we were playing ten. I, I think Hearts would have dug in anyway because they had something to hold mm-hmm. on to, um, yeah. and it just would have been mere like harder than it than it than it turned it to be. Um, yeah. I, I started laughing just as you were talking there, right? So we've got Twitter open because we get all our talking points on Twitter, right, or the, the vast majority mm-hmm. of them. And I get a wee notification that pops up when somebody sends in something with a little bit of a preview. 
And just as we were talking, so Gaz on Safari sent in a, a tweet. And he's opening a bit of it, says that game is probably a decent analogy for our season. But then he's, I don't read the rest of that tweet because we'll we'll go into talking points. But his, his next tweet says, uh, also, analogy is one hour away from anal orgy. Racket shot bangers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, just, that's what I saw, anal orgy. Um, oh, I need to laugh. Uh, I like that. Do you think Marshall should have done better for the goal? That, that was my first thought. Right? So you and should have done better, but I was like, I thought Marshall took about three weeks to get done it. Uh, he did, but I think I'm not going to criticise him here, and I've probably been. I was I was an early criti- critic of him, I think, but this season. But I, I think it comes through two defenders. Mm-hmm. He's probably hedging his bets on a deflection, going the other direction, and it, and it's come straight through legs or bodies, isn't it? Stevenson and somebody else. Um, so, nah, I, I think it, it did go down slow, but I think he probably went, he always goes down slow. Eh? Like, even the penalties he's, he's jumped over this season, you think if he were just a wee fraction quicker, he might have saved them. Um, but I don't, I, 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 I was the blue one, I was the blue one, really, on that one. I, he just, he was, he was sleeping, um, which he keeps saying he likes doing. <laughs> so, he was fucking doing it yesterday at that point. I. Uh... Yes, I definitely would put more blame on you, but I thought, Marshall, even I sometimes think goalkeepers dive for things where they could stick a foot out. Mm. Do you know, like it was quite close mm. to him. And mm. I, I know you probably got more control over the save if you dive and get it with your hands. But I sometimes think, just, fuck, can you, could, you could have stuck a foot out and just... Would they have not been diving the wrong way then, though, if he was sticking a foot out? Because he was diving towards the ball. If you were going to chuck his feet at it, then he would be, but it was, be diving what, the what, what I mean is, didn't he, didn't he dive? It was, it was close to him. Or just run across so, and kick it away. Aye, or, or just like, I could have reached it just by, by blocking with his, with his foot. Mm. Mm. So, uh, like, I think there's a lot of goalkeepers that they, it's that ingrained in them that they've got to dive mm. for saves. But they sometimes miss, like, the obvious thing is just to keep the. Uh, kind of, like, if, it, if, if it was a centre half. Uh huh. I would have put the leg out. Aye, if Hanlon had been standing where Marshall was, he would have put his leg out and cleared it. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh, well, uh, through them tried it, though. Uh, uh, well, and, aye, they went through them. Mm. But they weren't on the goal line. It didn't point. even look that uh, hard a shot, eh, really. Nah, it wasn't right like in it was the corner the or nah. that but I was frustrated. Having but said that, th- Ewan should do it and closing it down. We're on a delay, mm. yeah. We've got a we've got a second delay here and we're talking over each other. Are we um I, I I just think that there's got to do better closing it down. I don't know, I would agree with that. Um but other than that, so I think hearts are a wee bit of the ball after that, but they never really troubled us. A couple of corners, and, and I didn't think we looked in any bother. We, we pretty much dealt with them quite well. Uh, then we get the the, uh, the break forward where uh, this bit sort of breaks through, knocks it across towards Cadden. Cadden gets fouled, left gives the penalty, goes to far, ends up being a free kick and a red card. What did you make of that, that whole situation? Well, I kind of touched on it there, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, when I saw the replay, I thought, oh, he's outside the box, bastard. And then I thought, I wonder if he'll give him the red card. You know, I thought I thought we were just going to get the free kick and the, the red card. So, um, Stuart Level was adamant. He's like, it's still a penalty. It's a penalty. It's a penalty and a red card. That's what he was saying. Um, but I was like, I don't think so. Because it was quite clear it was outside the box, yeah. Aye. But then you get that foul continues into the box thing. But I think the foul was outside the box here. Aye. And it was it didn't continue into the box. Yeah. I think it, VR got it right. Referee got it wrong. Um so I think I think that was the right decision. I thought Lovell's point about it, he had never made a genuine attempt to play the ball. I think he I think he did. I think he went. He just didn't realise Cadden was there. I think uh, mm. the lad has got to kick the ball. Just no realise Cadden's there. Filled him. It was definitely like a, a clear goal scoring opportunity. The red card's the right decision. But if it had been in the box, the yellow card and the penalty would have been right. I think mm. the referee would have got that right, and I think Var got it right. And how right, it all right. sort of panned out in the end. So it did go ah, to the see. red card. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, no, it was, I think they got it right. So, a cracking free kick for us, but well, the keeper's got. To, if it was your goalie, he'd be gone. What the fuck? But aye. aye, it was a good free kick. But he's just caught the goalie there because he must have give him the eyes or whatever the football terminology is for it. Because because team will from there, can't you? He did. He did. But, uh, I just a lovely strike. The and it, it's totally counterintuitive to where you think he's going to. Like you say, remember giving him the eyes, but even, like, even the way that he's shaped up, it all looks like he's going to try and clip it over the wall. Which and is the obvious the, way to go, eh? Because that's the goalie's side. Like the goalie yeah. shouldn't go like that. 
No, absolutely not. Um, there's a few other sort of uh, incidents in the game which were significant and intended to focus around injuries. So we had Miller injured, Jake Doll Hayes took a sore one. Um, obviously, there was it Haring? Haring, cl- yeah, clashed, clashed heads with Doyle Hayes and he went off. Now, Hearts used a concussion sub there, right? And I'm mm. not sure the rules because we, we did six subs in the game, right? We put six subs on. So, I don't think Jake Doyle Hayes went off as a concussion sub because when he hurt himself, it was his arm or his shoulder that, 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 yeah. that, that he'd hurt. So, if a team plays a concussion sub, does that give the other team one so that, to level up? That would seem ridiculous. But uh, it's would it football though? rules. But well, it, would, would that not be like to sort of nullify any advantage if teams be like, so we know head knocks, Colin, that when a team's winning no. one nil and you're in the last 20 minutes, the amount of head knocks that, that happen, uh, mm-hmm. the defending team goes yeah. off the fucking scale that they didn't get when they're winning one nil with 10 minutes to go or 20 mm-hmm. minutes to go. So if you were trying to run down the clock and you were like, right, I'll use, oh, head knock, I'm going to use a concussion sub and you're really playing the game there, the fair thing to do would be to say, right, to the attacking team, that right, you also get another sub then, if they're playing one. Why? How would that be fair? What the difference does it make? Well, because then they, they, they can freshen their team up as well. Kind of everybody's out in their arse and mm. they, they're bringing on a, a fresh player. And I, I wouldn't surprise me if the football rules are as daft as that, because like, football rules are fucking stupid. But we... What my concern with that was, like... Well, he said a big fucking egg on his head and we just let the cup play on pat, pat, pat him on the back Aye, it's, it's funny eh put a bit of Vaseline on it I'm like they put a fucking bit of Vaseline on that the, that's the, mental you can, I'm just having a look at the rules you can make a so so you've the team, had a heat knock and we can make a concussion sub aye won't the team uh, won't the team making the, the substitute have a possible advantage by having more fresh players on the field than their opponents no because once one takes place, the opposing team are given the right to make an additional normal substitution at a time of their choosing. That's mad. That's so, mad to me. That's uh, But so uh, anyway, I, I think so, that, so that, so that, that makes sense. Rules, I, I, I think why you think that doesn't it make sense. Like it, it just evens up. Well, like if you've you, got a head, but you're subbing them because they've got a head knock. You're not subbing somebody to freshen them up. Aye, but well, well, you're actually building a rule in there because you can everybody cheats. <laughs> Like, well, pretend, I, yeah. you've got, pretend you've got a head knock and we'll sub you that, and that's what they're thinking like, well stop folk pretending they've got head knocks like instead it, it, it's, ne- it's mental and rugby they've done it once mind they, they made the it was the cut it was the blood one the blood subs aye the blood subs they had to capsule capsule they burst it like to get the sub and it, it was uproar and that and like, that was their way around it but uh, and the, but that, that'll go crap down on but football it's just like right we can they're going to pretend they've got head knocks so what we'll do is we'll give the other team an extra sub as well just deal with head knocks properly um, I, th- I thought the game changed Colin like, for, for the worst for Hibs right? so I think we huffed and puffed but we still were creating chances like Team Wolves had a couple of good saves we've hit the post um, we were pretty wasteful final ball decision making was pretty poor especially as the game went on but once Cadden got injured Mm. That we, we lost the right hand side, so Campbell went on to right back. Shape and balance, aye. And I just were like after after that, we just never looked like we were going to do anything in the game. Like everything became long balls. Yeah, we we brought players on, and I, I think kind of, my my takeaway from from the game right after, that, apart from being kind of frustrated and uh, disappointed, because I was quite angry at full time because so we'd missed a, a really good opportunity, but mm-hmm. when I had a chance to sort of reflect on it, I was like, right, you probably look at the injuries being the reason that we didn't do as well as we could have done because we've had to shuffle players in. So Delferi wouldn't have played, for example. Henderson, you wouldn't have thought we'd have played as long as he, he did, although he went off again. Uh, you wouldn't have had Campbell on it right back. Like These things, you're, you're kind of putting some square pegs in round holes. Yeah. And uh, and you could tell, obviously, like, like Newell was out in his, his last legs as well. Like He'd taken a bad knock on Wednesday night, but I think he was playing through the pain to... Uh, to play, so I was like, right, there's there's a bit of mitigation there, um, but I thought what it showed was that the players that have over the course of the season shown themselves to be not good enough to warrant a starting place probably aren't good enough to stay at the club. 
Right. Uh-huh. Um and uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna dedicate extra time today. We'll we'll talk about our who our player of the year is because the player of the year award is tonight, but we'll also talk about uh, the players that we would move on. Um so we were relying on players who over the course of the season haven't been good enough for the team. Yeah. And our best players, we really needed them to be like sort of 13, 14 out of 15 um, performances. And mm-hmm. I don't think anybody in the in the Hibs team hit that height or close to it over the course of the match. Um, and, and so that's probably why we fell short. And it probably summed up our season, I think. Mm-hmm. I, we feel sure because we, we lacked creativity and ideas, didn't we? Because I'm mm-hmm. watching it going, why are we just picking one bows into the box? Diagonals. Like, they, they just camped in, like, which you would expect them to do. They're hudding on, yeah. they're hudding, but um, when they know they don't need to win, which is their mantra anyway for a derby, don't lose. Um, so it plays right into, into their sort of what, what they do. But um, when you're doing to 10 and you're hudding on to a 1 well, 1 all, um we, we didn't look like we knew how to break that down. And we've been good against 10 men all season. Um, but we just didn't. We just diagonals into the box and you think, well, they're bigger than us. But, yeah. And and actually, I think that then played into the, the you were talking about the chances we had and the saves that, that the goalie made in that. None of them were for your attacking players. It was, no. it, it was uh, Hanlon, which I think was it was a decent header, but it was straight at the goalie. It was a quite an easy Aye. save. He had a good shot as well, Hanlon, in the first but, half. It, that was a beauty, actually. That was Aye, that was, was the, that was the best. She had that one, and then you had um, Fishy's deflected one. It was their defender that put on the post because Fishy's effort wasn't that great. You know, it was yeah. a deflection that made it hit the post. It made it look good. And um, what was the other one? There Miller. Was another one. It was in, Miller. It was Miller. Absolute fucking setter. And and you go right. So where's and it, Newell had one actually. Newell, the keeper, made the save for Newell as well, didn't he? Aye. Um, and that was he was the most attacking player somebody that scored what, two goals a season or something like that, that got an effort on goals there uh, Nisbet and Yuan didn't have any efforts McCurdy had the one he blasted over the bar didn't make the keeper work um, when actually the option was to play the defender in to get a Aye. shot away rather than fucking try the try the effort um, so there was quite a lot of shots there I suppose it was just rattled off and we probably missed some but I didn't feel like any of them were the, the most threatening should have been Miller's one. Like It should have just been a goal. It's an Aye, absolute yeah, start, it should really. have been. Nisbet had a header that he, he sort of clipped wide. Do you know, like, uh, mm. it was one of his on glancing uh, headers. McCurdy had another shot, sort of like a shot cross, but he's going for the far post from, yeah. like, yeah. no, 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 the easiest to angles. Um, but it was, all defend- it was mainly our defenders Aye. that, that got the chances. And that kind of tells you, we were just pinging. Even, even at the end, Imagine you and Hoppy eh, sitting on the bench. You need the chucking boys on up front. Hanlon's yeah. basically playing fucking a free roll. And they put Devlin on up front ah, when you've got a striker on the bench. Fuck him. It blows my mind, stuff like that. Eh? It blows my mind. We've talked That's about like it David before. James coming on, eh? That, that exactly one. that. I was about to say it. Just why would you do it? It's like if it's like, we'll give Devlin a fucking an, an appearance fee for, ah, for his time at the, the season. Him, so but, eh... Uh, I just... There was no need to do it. You could have, like you say, I know not that I think Hoppy would have made any no, difference because I thought that's, I, his, I, that's his position. Aye. Like that's what he does. That's his job. <laughs> that's what he's paid for. I <laughs> thought the, the heads went with about twenty minutes to go. Mm. Okay, or, or on the seventy minute mark. I, I just thought the players looked like they'd run out of ideas by that point. Absolutely. That was when they properly kicked in their time wasting as well. Aye. Right. Yeah, but just like, and my daughter was getting all frustrated about it, kind of goalie falling on the ball and all that. I'm going, dead. we'd be wanting it as well. 100%. It, it's frustrating as fuck. It's up to the ref to add the minutes on and book them and all that, which he's kind of done sometimes. And we did get nine minutes. But, uh, I mean, they were in the corner at 70 odd minutes trying to win throw ins. And you're like, mm-hmm. mate, we've got to get about 10 minutes injury time here. And you're not even, there's still like 10 plus minutes left in normal time. It's like 20 minutes to go and you are in the corner. Fuck me. Like, I would be even as a even if it was us trying to head on, I'd be going it's too early for that. Yeah, like <laughs> you need to, it wasn't too early in the end, I suppose, because the man's still head on. Well, that's and I think I think that's when we should have had a bit more composure on the ball because what we did, like like you said, it was like long diagonal balls into the box, trying to just like lump it forward, 
I think if we were hoping to win the second balls or whatever, but we're actually like a no bad team when we, we keep the ball and we move it mm. about. I don't know if and you we, heard it was short level. Did you did you have a, was it Epstein? Uh, yeah. I, um, I thought he was actually a decent the, the best of the co commentators that I've seen this season, although he maybe just says too many things, can he's talking too much. But what he says is actually I I, I liked. But he was talking about like that's some ten men now. Make them run about. Like you called it giving them a chase and as and make them make them run Aye. about and you need a boozy in here to do it. And that's what you would probably have hoped Joe Newell could have maybe managed. Yeah. Uh, or Doyle Hayes. Um but we just didn't, eh? We just we just kinda of played in other hands. Aye. Um, and and I think enough with all the injuries and all that shit, but you know, it's um I we just didn't do that what you would expect, and and you know, like sorry, I'm going to keep carry on ranting here. My biggest fucking frustration is, and it's not just this game. See when a team are looking to kill a game, and they knock it up to their striker or their their winger or whatever, Janelli or Shankland in this case, go and then he touch them because they just got to fall down. They're no, they've got no intention of attacking. They've got their back to goal probably on about the halfway line or just 10 yards inside our half, they just want you to go and touch them because they've got to fall down. Mm. Right? It's the same with a defender when, like, Porteous was the master yet and all that and Presley before him. Go and they touch them because they've just got to fall down and they're going to get the free kick and they've got to take a minute to take the free kick then they've got to knock it in that corner and we'll be five minutes before we get the ball back. So, so go and did he touch them? But we do. And it's like, do, Every time. do we not really do that? Do, do we not talk about that in training? And like, it doesn't matter who you're playing. And I'm not, I'm not criticising the Hearts for it. It's, I'm criticising, it, it's part of the game. I'm criticising Hibs for it. Because yeah. awareness, naivety, whatever it is, uh, he's like, come on to fuck. Go and, go and, then he, go and then he put your hands on him. Because as soon as you glance, he's shut, he's done. Uh, and it's just, it fucking frustrates the life out of me. I was screaming at the telly. At points, Danny fucking that chub did done free kick. You know, Aye, don't don't fail, don't fail. That's a shout in it. I was not even a foul. Fucking... Just Danny touch him because it's not even a foul. You, you've just you've just touched him. Like, it, it, oh man, it, it's it should be, it probably shouldn't be a foul, but yeah. the rules are. It, it's like that. It's it's like the fucking letter of the law hanging. Yeah, like somebody got I think Nisbet got a push in the back yesterday. No foul. Like proper pushing the back on the touchline, but it wasn't looking for the foul, so he didn't get it. Whereas when they ones go up to halfway line and somebody falls down, they get it. It was like Shanklin running in and half and Miller in ten seconds. You're like he's never getting booked. It's a fucking definite yellow card. Aye, aye. It, five minutes into the game, probably even, but you're not getting yeah. that in the first minute. It's like it's like well, the rules say. Uh, well, the rules also kind of unofficially say you kind of get booked in ten seconds because the referee would get criticised for you know. Booking somebody too early. the cards out too early, he's, he's, he's lost control of the game. Or... It's an absolute stick on yellow card there. Aye, and it was. Um, we had a couple of shouts for penalties. McCurdy had one, Hanlon had one. Do you think there was anything in either of those? I can't remember the Kurt McCurdy one, mate. Um, uh, he sort of controlled the ball. It was a way to kind of fire off a, a shot. There was two players around him, and I think they sort of went through him to get to the, the, the ball, but I didn't really think there was there was much in it. I, I, I kind of remember, I remember the aftermath of the attack. I don't, I don't think I was really shouting for that one. The Hanlon one, you could get, like, because uh, I think I was like, get the boy to play, get VR to check it. But nobody seemed that bothered other than Hanlon, eh? Uh, um, Hanlon was shouting for it. I've had a penalty for that before this season. Jersey I, I, was just, was it, yeah. um, I think he went, oh my God, or something. Like at one point, I let read him. <laughs> but <laughs> the... That must have been VAR checked. Yeah, you would have thought so. And, but we've had one, we have got one at Parkhead this season for that, so mm-hmm. I don't know. They came at the fucking Jersey Pool rule, isn't it? I think, I think the, the one at Parkhead was probably more obvious and it stopped Hamlin getting near the ball, whereas this mm-hmm. one, Hamlin, Hamlin got to the ball. But if his shirt's getting pulled, he, can't, like he didn't get the header on target and that would definitely mm-hmm. impact your ability to, to connect the way you yeah. would want to connect. Um, I did, the... Replays didn't really give you a good enough sense of whether it was a penalty no. or not, though. Uh, not to tell. So, and, and you presume then if VAR have had a look at it, then it probably was a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, 
And then I suppose the last thing on the game before we go into talking points was uh, the the big pagger at the or I say pagger a bit of pushing and shoving mm-hmm. at the end. What do you make of that? So what? We well, could have a bit of passion, eh? They obviously didn't like each other. They see how the hairs got coming out the tweets about Celtic and kind of like the uh, what's his name, Janelli and um, can't think. I've seen another one like sort of tweeting like to almost like get up here and that. Um, I think the players obviously didn't like each other. Good. Aye. So it should be, eh? Aye. So what? Your rival, eh? Aye. Um, the other one is obviously the fans attacking the Hibs players because I mean that is a thing. That's a thing that's happened at Tin Castle. Obviously, a Hibs fan got done for it. Yeah. But it's yeah. Every every time you watch a derby, um, you see them leaning over that the barriers. Even when the ref went to the screen yesterday, they were in right in the ref. Aye. Aye. And it's like they need to do something about that, you know, crowd control because it's they're out of control. Like you see the boy, you see the footage of the boy throwing the punch, and the other one with that sort of evil print all over Aye. his he's doing. Um The boy's going to be uh, cursing that photo going around the way. Oh, aye, aye, it's aye. Not, he'll it's be, not a good photo for him. I've not seen his... I've not, no, it's not. And I've not seen the... I mean, obviously, we've seen it before. Like, folk are usually quite quick on the, the cancellation and that and getting the names out there. I've not seen that happen yet. But the... i seen it at the time. I thought, they've just punched... They look like they've just punched a brother. And it was the same earlier in the game because I think um, Cadden looked like he t- turned around to tell somebody to fuck off at one point. And then, apparently, I've not seen it, but Newell done the pretend throw the ball at the, the pretend casual. Um, and he's had to sell I've heard about that for folk that were at the game um, I've not seen it on the, the footage yet but it's like they're, they're over that like when they're at the corner Aye. they're over it like it's like they're fucking you know that. and I know it's about intimidating and all that but it's a wee bit like it's not just some of them eh? it's like all the way around Ken, it's like normally you get like your, there's this where you go if you're a mad section Aye. Uh, and obviously they shut that down because they were racist in that. But they, they've moved. They've obviously just moved all around the fucking, put them in a different bit each, and just spread it. It's not really a good look. But apparently Stuart Cosgrove pulled called it out on off the ball, saying it was out of order. But it's not just in the derby. It's worse than the derby. That happens to happens to St Johnston. Aye. And, so it's and, and you know a thing they do. Aye. You know what happened? Uh, like the Hibs, Hibs fan got pulled up. I think he got the tin pail as well, didn't he, for um, slapping their their goalkeeper. Mm, the goalie, aye. Uh, well, I like, pushed them or whatever they done, eh? But we had to bring the boy run on to get Ryard in. We had the boy run down the track Lennon. to get Lennon. And then has been yeah. hit by the coins and then you yeah. this one there. Aye. It's no... But it's every game really you watch. Enough. I only tend to watch games at, um, at Tynecastle and Sibs, but they're over that fence. All the way around. Behind the goals, doing that, doing that old stand side um, and all that. It's pretty... Um, I was going to say embarrassing, but I don't think they're that embarrassed about it. And no, it's not for not. me to be embarrassed about it. It's, but, um, aye, it's just not a good look like. Nah. Uh, right, let's get into some uh, talking points. Right, first one, a.k.a. Rab. Uh, hey, Rab says, uh, unfortunate to be forced into the subs. They had absolutely zero impact. So I think the only sub that I remember that was tactical was Jago going off. Um, Jago went off. Uh, the other ones were all sort of forced subs which uh, which isn't a great position to be in and you've even got the situation where Henderson gets subbed on and then subbed off again uh, before the end of the game Was it injury? That was an injury, was it? No, was oh, actually no, that was, aye, that was Tiggy Devlin on, so yeah, that one was tactical or you've just gone fucking get him off mm. Mm. We're, better, we're better with a centre half up front but that's the thing, because the tactical, I think the tactical one was good because it got the we didn't need a defensive midfield, we didn't actually need four in defence. Um so it was good to get a playmaker on, I suppose, mm-hmm. and, and as well when Henderson came on. But it just didn't make much play, yeah. Nah. It goes back to what I was saying at the start, is like these, these guys that came on as subs haven't they shown all season that they're good enough to be in the first team and I think also that 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 um just to come back on Miller, like Folk have been saying, why has he not been playing every week? Blah, blah, blah. That's why he's injured fucking most of the time. He's another one that's on the, you know, McGuinness and Miko. He's like, he's been injured most of the fucking season. Like, Aye. It's like, that's why, because maybe if he actually got a run of games when he's shown sparks of being decent, he would have got his place in the first team. 
he's at the team half the time because he's fucking carrying knocks. Uh, Greg Massey says uh, that sums up our season, unfortunately, which uh, is probably about right. Um, McCann C said uh, never took control of the game after the red. Too many panicked, no composure, and the injuries didn't help. Disappointing because we should have done what we did against ten man Celtic. Mm. Well said. I don't disagree with any, any of that. The, the bit about composure that was the thing that just frustrated me the most. Yeah. The fact that Lovell pulled it, gambled, didn't he? Because he was like, he just take, take the time, get the ball in, make the pass, and you're just shipping it on. Ken, it was like coming, I'm flicking it over. Like get ready, get it forward as fast as you could. It was just like we thought, mate. They've only got ten men. Like we've we've been good against ten men all season by taking your time and picking the pass and making the move and finding the space. And yet we just thought, oh, frantic. We've got fucking ages here. Like we eight with over an hour to to win that game. Aye, and we just needed. And maybe that again comes back to what we talked about all season and with the leadership thing, doesn't it? Like somebody really can just take control of that game and start dictating the pace. Yeah. They, they did it. They all just fell into the same, the same habit. Really, they were just like fucking, like no looking with their passing or or just poor passes, poor decisions, yeah, making the wrong choices, and poor quality a lot of the time as well. Like the amount of times we got in a decent position and like the fucking cross would go straight yeah. over everybody's head or right out of play. Although I think it was Campbell put in one cross. I think it was Campbell who put it in that kind of fizzed across the goal and it was a fucking lovely it was dying on a touch it was like any touch for anybody yeah. and that was a goal it's nothing we've been good at this season has it nah just, man. not at all uh, Leon said uh, stop start second half and have lacked any quality going forward uh, yep I think that's pretty much what, just what we've been stop saying stop game not just Aye. second half it was stop start the whole game I mean even the first half injury time as well you know it's like it was really stop start. That was that was exactly what they wanted, though. They didn't want it to be a quick game. They wanted it to be stop start, frustrate, Aye. get knock us out of flow, or, or just no, no let anybody get in any flow because they they just needed a job. So it was like it's fucking kill it for the first yeah. minute. And it was it was stop start as fuck. And I, I wouldn't criticise them for that either. No, no, like, I don't mean that. Uh, it's only like, because I don't no. want your team to do that if, if that's what we can do. It's not the Hibs way and all that. But it's how you get over the line, eh? That's it. Uh, Scott Craig says, shows our fringe stroke squad players haven't got it. McCurdy, Campbell, Henderson, Jabriah, all chronic. Cadden is poor, his first touch is awful. Ewan had a mayor. Uh, we got schooled in game management, all in the players today. Um, yeah. I guess it's difficult yeah. to disagree with uh, Ewan. What, you mentioned Ewan the other night after we finished. We went, Fuck, when have you mentioned Ewan? I know. I, see, I think I said to you, ah, oh, fuck him, we'll pick him up Saturday after he, he does the job. That just shows that that's that's the team uh, uh, summed up in Yuan's performance. Inconsistent, aye. Because that... he was trying to get everything yesterday. He was trying, every time he was like trying to dribble through three men and that, and you're like, just pass it. There's three on you. That means that somebody's not got anybody on him, and we've got a spare man. Just pass the fucking thing. Wouldn't he? Wouldn't he go outside on his left to to use his pace to get across him? Because he's obviously not that confident on his left foot, despite that goal the other night, which was a peach. And, it, and you're like, stop cutting in, stop trying to dribble, stop trying to do everything, you know, uh, fucking run fast <laughs> and score <Aye>. goals. <laughs> run fast, <laughs> score goals, team talk right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> aye, I, I, I thought it was, this was a game, if he'd followed up his midweek performance, I, th- I expected him to do it, because like, I didn't think Hart's defence is up to much. Uh, and you, you saw what he did to Celtic, and he was almost unplayable on Wednesday night. And it was like, after we finished recording, I was like, fucking hell, Yuan was brilliant. We, we never really dedicated yeah. any time to talk about him. You mentioned and his I, goal. I, and I felt bad about it. And then you're thinking, well, just go and have a good game on Saturday yeah. and then we'll, we'll double up. But he was anonymous. And that, that goes back to what we're saying. about you really need our, our best players to be at, at 13, 14 out of 15 mm-hmm. minimum. Uh, and I think Yuan probably was about a seven. Um, hi, and Karen obviously took a bad bad injury. I think he's out for for months, isn't he? Or something. That's, that's the Deutsch one, isn't it? So that uh, that's uh, bad news for Karen. Thoughts are with, with him for that because that kind of be nice for him, especially like the last game of the season. Eh? You're probably thinking that's good. Get stay, get on my holidays, get rested up, and then buckle. So I uh, hope you're fit again soon, Chris. If you're listening, which I'm sure you will be. 
Um, Andy Grierson says uh, McCurdy, Hendo, JDH, and Campbell, Cheerio Boys. Uh, anybody in that that list that you would be? I think we're going to talk about it more in extra time. But did you see GDH and Campbell? Were they the, yeah. the two there? I'm not sure about the two because they, they're like I think up to about February March time. Campbell was pushing Player of the Year. Like we'll come on to them when we have extra time. And Doyle Hayes wasn't he getting a game, and actually recently he's been decent. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm not claiming him to be world class or like the difference or anything like that, but he's been all right. Like he, he's, he's He's inconsistent as well. Aye, like, he was good. He was good against Celtic. Had a cracking game. game. Yeah. Um, manages to pick up a few head knocks, surprisingly for somebody who's stature. But um, I don't know about Doyle. I'm not quite decided on him because he, the inc- you could argue well he's inconsistent. So get rid of somebody that's consistent. You could, if you were being as as brutal as that. Um, but he's shown flashes that he could be decent. It's just could somebody get him to be consistent. Mm-hmm. And Campbell, I don't know, it was only January we were talking about him fucking getting sold to the English Championship and get him signed up so we can get big money for him. Aye. So, uh, Andy Rogers says our midfield is pish and we need a creative midfielder. Yeah. And we definitely needed a bit of creativity in there yesterday. I mean, there's no, no two ways about it. And I think if you're turning to Henderson to provide that, which I, I presume we kind of did, because that's the sort yeah. of player you would, you, you would make yeah. him as, um, then, then you're in trouble. Um, Matt Gilchrist said there's a few players in that team who had a chance to shine and stay next season but they blew it sadly makeshift side stopped us from progressing today big summer ahead can we trust LJ to get it right well it's not just him now because we've got a director of football um, so we've, we've got to trust him to get it right and what other option have we got aye like Sa- Saka I'm trying to get a new manager and then by the time we get a new manager in fucking they'll be pre-season You'll come in and more about them not being fit enough and starting too late and all that. No, we've got to we, just go with it. We definitely still have that flip flop on them, though. Like if you if you see some of the the messages and the tweets and stuff like Wednesday, Saturday. <laughs> I, Wednesday, Saturday. But I think like the folk, and I'm generalising here, and it's no fair or, or it's no pick about everybody that doesn't like them. But there's folk who, even when we've done well, are still like I still didn't like them, but he did well there. It's, it's caveated. It's not like, all right, he's winning me over. It's always, I just don't like him and I want rid of him. So as soon as you get a game like that, yesterday was it's disappointing. They go straight to get out. I can, there's like you see the abuse uh, and can folk can cry on loser and stuff like that. Like I got a couple yeah. of messages yesterday, folks saying like he's a he's a loser. And I was going, well, he didn't lose yesterday, right? That's two derbies like, in a row undefeated. Right? Aye, we, uh, we, we drew. <laughs> aye, like, every manager loses football games, right? You can't win all of them. And I don't know, I, I just think we, we sort of need to get behind them a wee bit. That's, that's mm-hmm. sort of my, my view, and just kind of go, right, we're doing all right. And mm-hmm. we know the situation this season. We can't rewind the clock back and make like the summer recruitment better. It is what it is. He's, he's got to do deliver this season, but we can't kind of go mm-hmm. like if we have an early exit for Europe or if we start the season with a fucking defeat, folk going sack the manager for, for like that, the, that's for the, the day one. The, but folk can, yeah, it's like it's just a constant, um, like dig your heels in. I'm not changing my mind. Hi, that's but, what folk uh, do. Like, it's no, it's not fun. I don't think, I don't think it's healthy, like, it's no, no conducive to a good season because. You end up every defeat becomes catastrophic, mm-hmm. and then every, every win becomes overly significant. You know, it's, it's like, like you have it's that goal. To, absolutely, extreme. it's fine to criticise when something's not going well, but it's like just because you've said critical points doesn't mean you're being a hypocrite if then you change your mind and go because that that was at that point in time. Aye, that's right. Aye. That was shit, and he should have done this. But actually, um, I, I think it's this time it's better, and he's been. Like if somebody like I'm saying about Doyle he's been inconsistent. Well, if he starts being consistent, I'll be happy to say that, and I'll be happy to, for him to be a, a main part of the first team. I'm not going to go. I used to say he was inconsistent, so I'll meet he stuck by my guns right, on that so one. As soon as he has a bad game, it. then I'll say he's inconsistent again because he had a bad game. You didn't mean it. You can change your mind. It doesn't mean you're a hypocrite or or anything like that. No, it's actually the clever thing to do. I would say. Oh, as, as, as new uh, as new evidence presents itself. I don't understand yeah. it. Like, mentality. It's like social media has ampli- amplified it all, eh? Mm, definitely. Because folk uh, will go dig your tweets up and get there. Is this you? 
chat. You know, I, I it was uh, at that time, yeah, seven years yeah. ago. I said, uh huh. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, Chris Riddle says, Bring back Jimmy Boko. Play him up front. Uh, well, Just not. Do. Uh, Gus Polinski says, This, this will not really work so well. When he has sent, you ever played the game of Uno? Card game? No. 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 Ah. So one of the moves in Uno is like you have, uh, like, miss a turn or pick up two. Or no, obviously you, yeah. you play two cards. If you've, or oh, I don't, I'm describing this wrong. Pick up two unless you've got a two. So if you've got a two, you can play it and you, you didn't, they didn't have to pick up extra cards. If you can't play the two, you pick up two. But it'll also yeah. be like four or whatever. So anyway, he's got like a picture of the Uno card and it's got capitalise on golden opportunity or draw 25. And then it's just got a wee guy with a hips badge for his face with 25 uh, cards. Mm. Nice. It'll work better picture format if you can the game. It made me laugh, aye, Gus. Aye. Oh, yeah. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, John Doherty says uh, need to take chances and use the ball better in the final third they were absolutely there for the taking today our subs aren't good enough to make the difference yeah totally agree with that one you've said that already aye aye Uh, yeah no arguments John good point young lad he's on the bench of course apart from Delphair Delphair or whatever he's called Um, he's the only and I didn't care how young he is but only development player that's on the on the squad, so he's not even that young then. So, Nate, you know, like, surely I'm going to double check, I'm going to fact check that comment because I, th- oh. I think that's what he is. But, uh, well, anyway, either way, right? We need to get through these talking points. Um, I've got BQ in that to go to. Oh, I love you, <laughs> but no, the 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 actual 21, like, Nate, Neil Connors and that to come on the bench, uh, to come off the bench or anything yesterday. And he would have been absolutely fucking buzzing for a game like that to go mm. in and be a hero like that, make their name, start making their name. Well, I mean, uh, what's his name? Ross Caldwell did it, didn't he? Huh? Uh, so. what, how do you think Del Ferry did? All right. Fine. Aye, probably quite tight on the ball. Uh, quite, uh, quite strong looking as well because he's not the tallest. Um, Ryan Borthwick said the subs were disappointing today, especially Henderson, who ended up being resubbed for a defender, and of course McCurdy, who is just absolute murder at football. Yeah. Didn't, didn't work for McCurdy yesterday. I'd be sort of kind of championing him a wee bit, but everybody is loads of folk are. I said that in the group chat. I said he'll try to manifest this year, and all. he's just not got it. I just think he's got it. Eh? Nah, I, I don't know. I, I, I hate giving up on players. Eh? Like I say that. Lords, mm. even can I can be quite critical of Anderson, but I always like, think it'd be good if he came good. But you've not seen so, any flashes yet to, to see it. It's nah. like, and McCurdy's in the same boat as Henderson. It's like, well, like even Henderson at least had a game or two last season that went, oh, I mean, I actually played it maybe in the, was it, was it the semi final? I thought, oh, he was Aye, semi final, he was good in that game. And then I thought, and I, I might have even touted him as Young Player of the Year in my predictions, which we'll cover next week, but nowhere near it. I mean, you've really got a young player. But come on, young player of the year. Oh, map, well. you know, I, I, anybody that's 23 winning young player of the year, so just fucking <laughs> red pen that like. Aye, scored straight through it. Mm. Uh, Chris Finn uh, said, too much fucking tinkering with the subs at half time. Overthinking it completely knocked the stuffing out of us. It played completely into Hart's hands. Aye. I, I mean, well, I, what, what subs did we make at half time? Was it just Jago? Uh, Jago went off, and so he came on half time. Henderson McCurdy came on at half time. Oh, was it three subs at half time? Aye. Mm-hmm. Probably too much, yeah. Probably right, because we were doing all right, and it was almost like you didn't even need to, we weren't chasing it right away. You could have taken Jago off, who wasn't having a great game, and um, and, and I think, I was almost thinking, just who's on a booking? Because uh, they well, will up. Aye, they took Stevenson off for, for that. I wouldn't have taken Stevenson off. I would have allowed Stevenson to use his experience and not get booked again. I don't know if he'd maybe if he'd maybe taken a knock or something because I thought Stevenson was having a good game. Although it's that it's fucking the, awful. It, it was brutal. The defenders didn't really get like they, they were coasting the game. Like I thought the defenders were comfortable eleven v eleven, but when it went ten v eleven, I fucking had the, yeah. the cigars that they kind of did yeah. none today. Um, Charlie McGrew thinks he made that up. Said uh, the ref shot it. Uh, LJ unlucky with a few four subs constantly having to reshape the team. I think at the start of split, most folk would have been delighted by eight points, but not managing to put Dons and Hearts away could easily have been 12 points in third. Looking forward to the next season. Aye, aye. Winning at Aberdeen would have made a massive difference, eh? Like that yesterday, would the draw might have suited us yesterday. Aye, it would have. 
It's funny. It, it, the I can't remember if it's if I've saved the tweet. Somebody tweeted in about the number of shots that we'd had over the two games. I mentioned it on the radio mm. yesterday. Yeah. Um, so it was like 30, 30 odd tr- shots over the games against Aberdeen and Hearts, 11 on target and one goal, which came yeah. for a set piece as well. Yeah. Uh, it just uh, shows where the, where the issue is. Mm. Um, are you looking forward to next season? Not yet. <laughs> I am. Again in August or whenever it starts. Or July yeah. now, eh? Because there's fucking. Because uh, we'll be back early for, well, when Celtic win the cup eh? um, for the country do, league. Do, do we really want fucking Celtic I, I, to win the cup? No? I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You were getting a tight for Andy, weren't you, for, uh, for dismissing it and the, the mm. opportunity to play in Europe. And, uh, I think it's over eh? I just think it's over I, 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 get, I get that. And it can be brutal if you get like, dumped out by a shitey team. But there is a chance mm-hmm. to kind of progress as well. You know, the flip side is that's where Hibs want to be. And mm-hmm. with a bit of, inv- uh, yeah, with a bit of investment, so I have some butts in it. Like if you're... We'll not have the players in by the time we're, we'll be in Europe before the transfer window's finished. Before, and, uh, before, we, uh, before we have a chance to do it. But you you would hope that would be like the club, maybe maybe go and see it as an opportunity to say, like, if we get the window right, put the right amount of money into it and when getting the group stages there, there's a decent amount of money coming into Absolutely. the club. But the window shuts in the end of August. We start in July. So, like, it's, it's an early early window. Like, we, we haven't really done early windows, eh? So, no. it's nice that dealings come after the season starts and we get it all done in the last couple of weeks. So, because that's kind of how windows work. So, we could be likely to be in Europe before. Before we've to anybody. Uh, going uh-huh. in Europe, this team that started on Saturday and that. Well, I, that, I think that would be trouble. Uh, but I, I think in principle, I tend to agree that being in Europe is better than no being in Europe. And it means we're not in the fucking group stages of the League Cup as well. So it takes away the opportunity to get embarrassed there. Mm. Ah, that's, last uh, season. No, that's a useful pre-season, no? Aye, but then you oh, just switch it for pre-season in that. Aye. No, but we didn't though, do we? Because it's Thursday nights and and all that shit and so then they try and find Saturday games to fill it in to get some money in through the gate and that so uh, the hips are here said uh, we need a box to box midfield a dynamo and a striker who can hold the ball up uh, I agree probably with both of them there's a uh, chat about Miko coming back on loan next season if he gets mm. fit if, uh, yeah, that's another one eh? it's like I don't know. They can be only sign these players because they're carrying all these injuries all the time. Well, he, how... he wasn't. He wasn't injured. I don't think he had a history of being injured before he came. Out. I think uh, he's just so been here. Because, uh, but so's a lot of players. So well, maybe mm. it's your fault. Then. Maybe we're doing something wrong. So, but what do you think? I think it's the uh, Josh was. Uh, Josh suggested it might be in the pitch on Wednesday night, but the amount of players that went down with sort of uh, muscle injuries and that he was like, must be something up at the pitch because Celtic players and have players that have gone down with. Uh, we, it's the end of the season. That's what I was, and, and it's uh, a lot of games close together. That was kind of the point I was making. It's like the big games, like we've had okay, Aberdeen Rangers, uh, Celtic Hearts. So it's like they're high intensity games close together. So you're gonna gonna be uh, struggling through those ones. Um, but I, I think in, you would you would need to review things. If certainly if I was Lee Johnson or Brian McDermott, I'd be reviewing what we do with the amount of injuries that we've got. Um, you and McAleese said a lack of composure. Several of the team need to be jettisoned. Hearts are shite. Um, and again, we'd agree with all of that. Mm-hmm. I think anything you disagree with there, Colin? No, nah, they're shite, they're lovers. That's uh, disappointing for me. Aye. Uh, Michael said one of the most exciting seasons, in my opinion, even though we finished fifth. Big game wins, 6 0 win over Aberdeen, and something to play for right to the last. What a difference on the previous two seasons. And I'm excited to see what LJ can do next season. That's a, a cup half full perspective on the season, isn't it? Mm. But I, think it, I just think it's funny, like that, that folk are actually folks seem happier. No, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying Ewan or, or others, but folks seem happier because we beat Aberdeen six 0 We've won a derby and we beat Celtic. Then when we finished third, I. But we beat. I mean, we beat Aberdeen in the third season as well. But I think these games are important. Like again, we've we've talked about it and you know, probably over talked about it. The big game thing. They do feel better. Like you, you you beat Celtic. 
I won that night. Yeah, I, when you finish fifth in the league, then. I know, right? But how much? How much, Billy? So yesterday we would have been like, if if we beat Hearts and finished fourth, we would have been buzzing. No, no, for so much for the finishing fourth, but for the way that we'd done it, Aye. we still wouldn't have been that much a different situation than where we fifth. Like we've got an extra couple of games to play if if Celtic win the cup. That's it. We'd have a wee bit more prize money, and you would have been able to say, "Oh, we finished above mm-hmm. Hearts." Yeah, like got a few <laughs> Aye, but but not, none of them are ones that you're you're fucking again that that was uh, that's up there with the birth of my kids moments. Do you know what I mean? No, no. And I can like beat that between six and I wasn't up there with that either. That's more like a sort of wedding day one. Um <laughs> <laughs> but actually um, turning them over like <laughs> yesterday, you know, the the good the feel good of, of that, like actually turning them over on the rain patch. Like, Aye. I just, I said to my brother in law last night, I said, you can the frustrating for me is like, and I've got a downer about the derbies, but if they came to us needing a win and we went down to 10 men with another normal thing left to play, they would have won yesterday and we just didn't. And that's the difference in the. Aye. That's what I feel. I, I just think, and again, it's hypotheticals, but that's just the, that's just what I feel. And then we just let ourselves in again in a derby. But I think they make a difference to the season anyway. I think over the course of the season, if you've got a, a, a scattering, or even if you can get like a, a, a like a decent number of wins like that, it does make a difference. Like uh, mm-hmm. when you reflect on the season, it's the memorable matches that you you remember, not necessarily mm-hmm. the finishing place. I, I do get that third place. I think is is success. I think over the season to get there, you've won a lot of games. Um, and that's what, what makes the difference with it. And if you can get a couple of big game wins in there, then even better. Um, Freddie Wright says, it uh, could have been worse. And to be honest, it's been a poor season all round regarding cups and injuries. So to finish where we did, we've done well. Um, and I can't remember if we mentioned it at the end of last week's one, or not last week, last episode when we were covering the Celtic game. So obviously we reviewed Lee Johnson's first year in charge and we gave him, what, 7 out of 15? And then we ended up going in yesterday saying, well, actually, if he finishes fourth, have we been a wee bit fucking mm. hasty with that uh, that review? But I think... Yeah, comes out right then. Going back, to, uh, yeah, but going back to what you were saying, that would have been right at that moment in time. Eh? Like You can't predict what he's going to... You can't give him, reward him for what he's not done yet. So, uh, but we did. We went into the last game of the season with something to play for. Did he do well to finish fifth, all in all? I think that's just what... I think that's a minimum... Expectation, isn't it? Very, very minimum. Out the first round of both cups and fifth in the league um, has got to be, if no minimum, below minimum. Aye. Uh, right, going to need to uh, pick up a pace here, Colin, because we've got. I know. Okay, loads, right? Oh, geez. Is it inad- them out. In a, well, well, I think we've probably covered quite a lot of them. Uh, inadequacies in the squad being shown up big time. Soon as Miller went off, he knew we were down as a force down the right flank. Then lumping balls at the defence just made it far too easy for them. Creative mid essential for next season to unlock stuffy defences like today. Connor Wallace, his team is really poor. Uh, Parmaham said, uh, meh, season's over, thankfully. It's been a disaster, but finishing fifth isn't the end of the world. Uh, Pat Fry's image says, McCurdy and Henderson haven't worked. Del Ferry added something, but we ran out of legs and the heads went. In terms of the game, we didn't get a second, but convinced that Hamlin should have had a penalty. His jersey made that sail shape you get told shows a pool. Um, Sharon Ford said we made six subs, like we covered that as well. Uh, Gavin Skeen said, shameful second half performance, sick of the sight of these players and the wee bullshitter in the dugout. Thank fuck the season is over. Mm. Uh, I think I guess, it's harsh. the second half performance was not good. I would totally agree with that. Um, do you know what? They, yeah, I, I suppose we we are are we hypocritical if we say like we're no sick of the sight players before we do a mm. half hour episode on players that we want to get rid of? So aye. <laughs> probably, aye, you know, it's just I think yeah. it's just the anger of the language, and it's probably put that half an hour after the match or something. Aye, that's it. And I was probably feeling like that at that point as well. Uh, Vince Robinson, bizarre tactics, second half, as if we didn't want to go down the right, golden opportunity squandered. I think we just never had the chance, Fence. Like I think that losing Cam, uh, Cadden and Miller. They had the chance once, and he went down. Mind the boy flipped in his arse, and Campbell went down the side. And um, 
Uh, but so there was opportunity. I think Stuart Level was banging on about it, wasn't he? And we're not using Aye. the width. That's where they're struggling. We just kept going down the middle with diagonals. Uh, Freddie against his Biden, we stretch hearts and continue with long balls. After 20 minutes of doing that, you'd think we'd know it wasn't working. I think that's the most frustrating thing. It about it. See, it's like, why, what is it the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and expecting different results? Yeah. And that's what we did. It was fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harry Fisher said in two games against Aberdeen Hearts both away we had 34 shots 11 on target and one goal tells you everything thank you yeah. Harry that was a, a really useful tweet because I did borrow on that yes, already in this episode too. I've just downloaded your books on my Kindle ah, right so we would recommend it Go I've read not read them yet I'm not recommending them I've just I've got to let you know when I've read them <laughs> if I recommend them I'll pre-recommend <laughs> it right <laughs> based on the quality of his tweets if, it, if his tweets are anything to go by the book's going to be a stonker. Right. Uh, Aaron B said that although uh, we need a big beefed up striker, someone like Miko can just plough through defenders and blast a shot at the keeper. Um, JPJ White said, we're halfway there. We have some good players and some players that will never be good. Need to shop a bit better than the English fourth division. Yeah. Uh, are you right? Did you hear um, Martindale on the Sports Sound podcast? No. He was talking about his recruitment and saying how difficult it is for their budget. He's he says they look at championship players in Scotland and there's some teams paying more than Livy are paying. And he says, mm-hmm. I mean, you go to look in England, that you kind of compete with Hibs and Hearts wages, obviously. So they're looking at like Conference League North, Conference League mm-hmm. South, that's level that they're, they're yeah. uh, picking to. But Livingston tend to pick out like some decent players, and mm-hmm. it's like I think it matters where you're going. If you've got good recruitment, you'll spot the gems. Yeah. Uh, Ali Farrell said uh, McCurdy and Henderson coming on made it 10v10 neither should play for Hibs again sadly yeah. uh, Keith Robertson said disappointing Hibs couldn't get the win it was there for the taking at 1-1 Hearts with 10 players did everything to avoid defeat had to rely on Clark a few times shame to lose Miller so early on hopefully JDH and Cadden not too serious Hanlon shut pulled in the second half penalty question mark uh I can't no sure need, we need to say back to you, but, enough, uh, uh, I mean there have been plenty of penalties being given for shirt pool in this season too. Yeah. Um it's Peyton said needs a huge clear out, too many players not up to standard. Ninety five percent of that team needs cleared out. Dave Thompson, no composure showing, all too rushed, lumping balls in which suited them. We should have knocked it about more. And uh, Jeff Ashton says the injuries on the right hand side killed our balance. Yuan was off the pace all day. Going down to 10 actually made Hearts mind up about the plan. The last 10 minutes were painful to watch. I would say more than the last 10 minutes, uh, Colin, were, were yeah. painful. Uh, SPFL Pish said, Henderson is horrific. Final ball is hopeless and adds absolutely nothing. McCurdy, also completely shite, would happily pack both their bags and get them to fuck. Some serious work needed for next season. Clear the deadwood and bring in some quality. I, I really hope... The Johnson's ruthless in the summer. Like, and if we can move players on, having to cut it this season, he just does it. And there's no like kind of, oh, we'll yeah. try and get, we'll try and make a player out of them type approaches. I think he just needs to be like fucking, right, really cold, calculated with, and just clear out who he needs to clear out. Uh, Alan Neil Duncan said we need a small clear out in the summer, hopefully before our Euro campaign kicks off. Uh, Hib, which is about double said clear out again. Longest transitional period in the history of football clubs. Subs not good enough. First eleven not good enough. Stephen Scott, worst team in years, but only one defeat in top six games. Have we progressed? Discuss. You can argue that it's progressed in terms of league position, but aye, we we'll have, we we'll have, I suppose. I think that's one we could maybe take it an extra time mm, over the yeah. whole season and, and have a look and see what that progress actually looks like. It's a good question, Stephen. Uh, Kevin Dillon said absolutely lost an entire right side to injury which affected the balance. Went long when we should have kept it short and neat. However, a halfway decent after split showing overall and look forward to seeing who we bring in in the summer. Uh, Tony Swanson, Naismith is an arsehole. Always has been. Cause a fight in an empty house. Part of his game plan. Um, Mr. Janetta, any, any comment on that? Naismith is an arsehole. Always has been. Uh, just agree. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Janetta said, why did we not play with width as soon as Hearts went down to 10 men? Also, do we need a rebuild as a lot of these players lack composure and bravery on the ball? Uh, right, we're just going to need another couple, Colin, because we're going to be here all day <laughs> and we're kind of getting over the same points here. Um, 
Leo had said it was clear from January that there was going to be a big summer ahead. We finished just outside our season's targets in the league, so we've definitely got a platform to work from. A bottom six finish would have been a disaster. MQ um, said, LJ isn't the main cause of some of the draws in our squad, but this decision to bring on two players who have been mediocre all season at halftime was absolutely baffling. Instead of pointing fingers, I'd prefer if he'd take some accountability for his decision-making. Um, that will do us, I think, Colin. Uh, mm. Pretty much everybody's saying the same thing. I think, you know, like, I think the uh, the view on the game pretty consistent. Sure, we lack quality, we lack composure, need a bit of work in the summer. We're going to talk about starting that work just now. Who's going to leave mm. the club or who do we who do we think should leave the club? Uh, that'll be on Extra Time, which is for our subscribers. If you don't already subscribe and you want to, uh, go to our Twitter profile, click the wee link in there, and you can sign up. If you want to have content, it's only £2 a month, which I think is um, about the price of McDonald's coffee. So that's fair, I think. In fact, mm-hmm. probably under, underselling it, if, if I'm honest with you. But <laughs> uh, if you want everything, you want the short banger stuff, that's three quid a month, about even better value there too. Right, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all your talking points. Sorry if we never got to them. Um, it's just... Yeah, nobody wants to listen to us talking for three hours. So, uh, right, we'll see you next time. When they trailed me down when I broke free I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee 